Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and in this video we're going to be looking at Paratwist version 4, alright, so you can call this a review or my review uh, of the latest version of Paratwist, which as I mentioned is the uh, version 4 release and in my opinion is quite a big release. Uh, that's why I'm making the video. If you'd have, if you've been following the channel for a while now, you know that I really do recommend Parrot. Uh, but uh, over the last few months, I haven't been using it. Uh, I have been, you know, going back and forth, but I just haven't come to use it. Now, now before we get started with the video, uh, I just want to point out that uh, I'm really sorry about the inconsistent uploads. I'm working on a, a new schedule for uploading and obviously higher quality content, so you can vote for that. Uh, as for the, the the series that are continuing, they are going to continue the web application penetration testing series is ongoing uh, and we are going to start the hack the box series. Uh, although I'd really want to know what you guys think because if I post the solutions to these uh, to these machines for hack the box, won't it spoil it? Uh, so what I'd recommend is that you in the uh, comment section, just let me know which uh, machine on uh, you're having trouble with specifically and I'll solve that one. If that makes sense. That being said, let's get started. So as you can see, I have it uh, installed here on a virtual machine, on VirtualBox more specifically. And you might be wondering to yourself, why on earth do I have this taskbar here, this Windows taskbar? And that's ass essentially there's a, a kind of an issue I've been experiencing with uh, with virtualizing version four of Parrot. So I, I'm still to find out how to sort the issue. I did try it on VMware and I had a, a lots of errors with getting the full screen mode to work properly. I installed the VMware tools, um, you know, I just couldn't get it to work properly. So I had to fire up VirtualBox and it seems to be working, you know, excellent, honestly, to, to, be, uh, to be honest. And, uh, you know, let's get started with what has changed with, uh, with Paratwist. What are the big changes with the latest version? Well, for me, the latest version comes in its, uh, in its different images that uh, it's released now in, in terms of support. So it supports Docker and it supports net install. So if you know what net install means, uh, it essentially allows you to, to install the features that you want in regards to Paratwist. So awesome to see that you can customize your installation as far as embedded devices are concerned. So, you know, you can customize a version for yourself and you're able to tinker around with it and make it work on certain boards like the Raspberry Pi, although they have made a version for that, but you get the idea. You can customize it to your liking and to suit your embedded device needs, uh, you know, that type of application there. And uh, then Docker templates, this is something very, very important as they've stated. Uh, if you know what Docker is, Docker essentially allows you to, to deploy uh, an operating system in an isolated manner on, on top of any host operating system. So Docker is used, uh, you know, a lot nowadays and it's good to see that they have gone in that route providing Docker solutions. Uh, in terms of the kernel, they've updated the kernel to the latest version, which is uh, the version 4.16. Uh, and again, keeping it fresh, that's what they like doing. And, you know, you could have upgraded the kernel with the older version, which was version 3.11, Paratwist version 3.11, but it's always good to have a nice clean install in terms of kernel and the distribution uh, with the latest updates to the packages. I'm not going to be going over the packages that were, upda uh, that were updated, uh, you know, just talking uh, on the big features that were included, in my opinion, features that uh, really stood out. Okay, uh, and essentially when we, when it comes down to, uh, what we're talking about right now, which is the Spectre and Meltdown, uh, they had already patched it you, uh, in version 3.11. So it's always good to see that they had done it earlier and that patch is carried on forward, uh, into this version of Paratwist, which is awesome. Uh, they also made changes to their sandbox. Uh, essentially, if you know what sandbox, uh, sandboxing is, it is, it's almost uh, what you would call virtualization or isolation of a program, uh, for the purpose of security and, uh, you know, with fire gel, which is what they've been using, they have made a few changes and uh, they have now more support for more applications. So they've been testing it. And uh, according to them, the the, the sandboxed applications are more stable and reliable. So uh, they, they do recommend that you check the versions here. So if we just type in fire gel and the list, for example, you can see that uh, that is the current one that's running in, in the um, in the sandboxed 
uh, it's running in a sandboxed environment because I do have uh, I do have Firefox open right over there. All right, so sorry about that. My phone just went off as usual. Uh, the next change comes uh, for the desktop environment, which is Mate or Mate, uh, depending on what you, what you want to pronounce it. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so when it comes down to the desktop environment, uh, they've been working with Mate. And the reason they've been going with Mate is because, um, or Mate, um, again, I'm just going to call it what I like to call it. Uh, the reason they've been going with it is so that it uh, it is low on the system resources. They could have gone with KDE or, you know, another type of desktop environment. But th this operating system, as they've mentioned many, many times in their, you know, uh, as their primary objective is to keep it as uh, low in terms of system resources as possible. All right. So they've updated to, to, to the latest version, which is the version 1.20 or 1.20, depending on what you want to call it again. That's the release version. And the changes just come in terms of graphical improvements and user interface improvements. As you can see, uh, it does it does look like they have refined the user interface. Now, I really, really enjoy the Parrot OS user interface and it really does show. So, you know, you can always check. Um, about Mate here, that's the version it's running, uh, 1.2, uh, 0 0.1, and there you are, you know, it's the latest version. Uh, awesome desktop environment, as again, as I said, it's very, very customizable with both panels, top and bottom, so it's really, really awesome. Um, the other big change that was made uh, was in terms of web servers, and you might be wondering, well, what do you mean? Well, if you know about your local web servers, you know that Kali Linux, for example, runs Apache. Well, uh, uh, Paratoes have now given you the option of using, whoops, sorry about that, guys, of using Nginx. Now, this is awesome for anyone who has been using uh, web servers or is interested in local hosting uh, or hosting their files locally uh, and, you know, just configuring their own local host. Uh, Nginx will be a, an awesome alternative because Apache is aging now. And if I just type in N Nginx here, um, Nginx. And as you can see, there we are. The uh, it's just started it, and uh, you you can go ahead and configure it depending on how you feel is uh, suitable for you. So uh, I'll be probably be making a video on how to use Nginx because again, it has really awesome features uh, with you know things like the load balancer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then they've obviously made changes to Firefox, which is running the latest version, which is Firefox version 60 or Quantum, as they call it, the whole new look, which is quite nice to be honest. So that, those are minor type of changes and LibreOffice, which is the, uh, you know, Microsoft Office alternative for Linux uh, is also updated. Uh, so again, it offers stability and efficiency. Uh, as for the upgrades, uh, the package upgrades, I'm not going to be covering that because again, obviously that would be redundant because there are a lot of package upgrades and you could have up upgraded them if you're running the same version, uh, version 3.11, you could have just upgraded your packages without changing your distribution. Uh, that being said, uh, let me just give you guys a bit of a hands-on overview of what's been changed. Uh, again, as I said, they haven't changed anything in terms of the interface. Uh, one thing I did notice, however, were the changes made in terms of categories to the menu options, yeah, to the menu here. And uh, what I like, uh, again, is the ability for me to, uh, first of all, which they have had for a long time, the ability for me to launch my own programs at startup. And uh, I'll be running that as an experiment. And as you can see, if I just start blank right here, I can set up all my dependencies really, really well. And there you are. Uh, you know, I have my Docker here that I can just use. I prefer using a dock uh, as compared to, you know, having my icons placed up here. Uh, that um, that's pretty much it when it comes down to what I like about system functionality. But when it comes down to your themes, I haven't seen any new theme uh, right now. But probably my favorite ones are going to be icy dark and uh, the uh, the arc light. Those are my two of my favorite themes like, that I like rocking with. So I'll be going ahead and using Parrot OS and obviously giving you my verdict uh, as the days go as the days go by because I obviously want to test it extensively but so far so good everything works perfectly you know uh, programs launch instantly faster than Kali Linux uh, and obviously with the addition or the improvement of sandboxing you're offered much better security 
So as you can see there, Wireshark loaded up really, really quickly and you can start monitoring your packets there. And you know, there you go. That's uh, essentially that uh, when it comes down to the speed. Uh, so many of you guys have asked me, what do I think uh, of its um, of its performance, g given the fact that you might be running it on low system resources, which is what most people are, are targeting with, with virtual machines. Now, the truth is I've run uh, Parrot OS for a long time now, for almost uh, going on to two years, and I've used it since its very, very early versions. And since the beginning, it worked perfectly on all the hardware, and the same thing can be said here. Although I have noticed a spike in system, user, in system resource usage, if I just uh, launch the system manager here, you can see that out of two gigabytes, uh, it's averaging out at 1.2 gigabytes with Firefox open with one or two tabs. So that's not too bad. Uh, but I would recommend, you know, if you're using two gigs of RAM, um, you're going easy on it uh, and obviously increasing it will help a lot uh, with the, with the uh, obviously with the ability of using swap. But again, that's going to be really slow if you're running it on a virtual machine. Uh, that being said, you can see that the usage is quite good in terms of CPU usage. But when it comes down to RAM management, I'll have to still test it out with a few other programs opening, giving, um, you know, giving it typical usage scenarios, burp suite open, your browser open, let's say you're performing a web application penetration test. So, you know, those types of scenarios. So it's some, something that I'll be looking at um, quite a bit. Um, so that's uh, my verdict when it comes down to user to system performance, when it comes down to usability functionality, you know that w what my feelings are on it, it's fantastic. As you can see, I was able to easily just configure my dock here and uh, that really uh, helps my productivity. Uh, the way the uh, the operating system is sorted is fantastic. You have your dock here and you can you have your system resource manager there. You have your processor, your RAM and uh, your network here, which allows you to monitor your computer's activity uh, in real time, which is always awesome instead of using the uh, proprietary task managers. That being said, those are the latest changes made to Parrot OS uh, version 4.0.1. Uh, of course, we now need to move on uh, and, uh, you know, just start using it and obviously wait for the next release, which should be uh, now sometime later. Uh, but also very, very keen to see what Kali Linux have uh, in their in their sites, uh, because I think that Parrot OS now is posing as a real competitor to Kali Linux. And it's always going to be interesting to see how they both compare to each other and whether or not one of them is able to, uh, you know, to push in front of the other one. Because as far as penetration testing distributions are concerned, uh, no other distribution has come close uh, to Parrot. Uh, to, to No penetration testing distribution has come close to uh, Kali Linux as Parrot OS has come close to. Um, so I think they are very, very close and cracking it is just getting it used more. I think that's the whole puzzle that Parrot OS has to conquer now. Uh, you know, just getting many, many people to use it and for the industry to realize it as a viable option. Uh, but again, that's, that's something that we'll be discussing later on. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Go ahead and try it out for yourself. I know most of you or really, really enjoy using it and already have, have it installed. So let me know what you guys think if you ever encountered any issues. And yeah, uh, that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you found value in this video, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section. If you have any uh, questions, again, you can post them on my social networks and on my website. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.